The first founding American text is undoubtedly the Declaration of Independence, of the four, published on the 4th of July, 1776. It is the first text in which the idea of the United States appears. It's the first text upon which the, Ameri the American nation can be said to have been built. It is a political text. It's also a statement of principles. And these principles are to be found, most of them are to be found, in the U.S. Constitution, which is a text which was shaped and written ten years later. When I say principles, I mean these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Plus, the, this idea that governments are instituting among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. In other words, the government is legitimate if it is a government selected, chosen by the people, the democracy. If we have a look at the timeline of the United States, a very simple timeline, we see that immediately after the Declaration of Independence, the United States realized, well, the 13 colonies at war with the British Crown, realized they needed a common system of government. This first system of government was called the Articles of Confederation. And it's the first example of American institutions, of an American government even though it was not really a government, but a treaty of friendship, a bond, but a weak bond, between the states. The war ended in 1783, and it quickly appeared that the Articles of Confederations were insufficient. So a few years after that, in 1787, a constitutional convention was called. The idea was to rework the Articles of Confederation, and this Constitutional Convention led to the Constitution, which is the basis for the current system of government in the United States. The Articles of Confederation were well, very interesting because they exemplified everything that could be wrong with a system of government. They were created in 1777, ratified in 1781, and lasted until 1789. The problem with the Articles of Confederations was that they created a very weak form of government. They created one chamber, no president, one chamber in charge of all the duties, making the laws, the legis legislative power, and applying the laws, executive power. There is a problem with that. The problem is that in order to apply the laws, you need money, you need people. And under the Articles of Confederation, the government did not have money because it could not create, it could not levy taxes. So it had to depend on the states. And if the states were unwilling to provide the government with money, then it was unable to function properly. And this is what happened. The states were reluctant to provide this weak government with money. And with reasons, it was ineffective, and as such, why would they subsidize it? Except, of course, if they refused to subsidize it, it was bound to be ineffective. George Washington, who was to be the first president of the United States, called the Articles of Confederation a rope of sand, something very weak, something which could be uh, broken at any time. And problems started to arise after the end of the war, when it became apparent that the states were unwilling to regulate commerce effectively. States wanted to collect taxes on goods coming from other states, so the goods were not flowing between the states. There was this major problem with commerce and trade within the colonies. So the idea arose of uh, gathering a constitutional convention, a group of people who would 
rewrite the Articles of Confederation, who would improve on the Articles of Confederation. But they did more than that. Instead of just improving the system, they created a new one. They wrote the Constitution, which was written in 1787, ratified by the states in 1788, and was in place by 1789. It did not go smoothly. So in order to promote this new system, in order to convince the states to ratify this new system, the Constitution, um, the supporters of the Constitution, the people who wrote the Constitution, led a very effective press campaign. They wrote letters, they wrote pamphlets, and these letters and pamphlets are still used today, they are still read today. They explain the idea, the philosophy behind the Constitution as we know it. And these texts are collectively known as the Federalist Papers, a very important resource on American, the American Constitution. George Washington, bottom right, and the signing of the Constitution, uh, top left. A very neutral, sober representation. We'll see that representations evolved over the year. This is from the mid-19th century. In my introduction, I read you the preamble of the Constitution. You probably realize by now that it echoes the Declaration of Independence. We, the people of the United States, hmm, we, a government must derive their power from the consent of the government. There's something there. So, the preamble to the Constitution, a preamble to a very technical text, is again a philosophical statement. But it's a very precise statement. Let's have a closer look. In order to form a more perfect union, Hmm. They wanted to improve on the existing Union, the Articles of Confederation, so improving on that. Establish justice. This was in the Declaration of Independence. Ensure domestic tranquility. Remember, there were troubles. People went hungry. There were riots. So the writing of the Constitution was a way to respond to these riots, to prevent a civil war, a possible civil war. Provide for the command defense. It makes sense. If you have a strong government, it means a nation is stronger on the international scene. Promote the general welfare. Improve trade. Improve commerce. Make it possible from, for people of one state, from one state to trade freely, easily with people from other states. That was the very reason why the Constitutional Convention was gathered in the first place. So preamble, which is to be read as a very strict program. And the rest of the document is a technical, legal document. But we'll see that it's also more than just a legal document. It's a symbol. But we'll talk more about that in the next part.